you have step one. For example, I'm going to click Le Fruit, which is going to be your topic. And then all I'm going to do is share a few vocabulary for the students. Pardon me if there are mistakes because this is just a demonstration. And just create my puzzle. So look at that. Within a few seconds, you have a puzzle ready. And you have the clues here. So students can go ahead, find the translation, and then get back to you with the vocabulary. For example, the translation, what is the gender for the fruit? And the best part is you can personalize your learning. So maybe there is a student with an A grade who, is, who can learn 20 vocabulary at the same time. And that may be kids with special needs. All you can do is give them five vocabulary. So the curriculum should be designed in such a way that no child should be left behind. So in that case, you should personalize your learning using a tool like this. And it is not just applicable with vocabulary. You can do it for anything. You can do it for science. You can do it for geography. You can just give the clues and the answers. They have to find the answers in the word search. So this will help them to be very creative. And you also can be very creative when you design your lesson plan. So let me go with the, oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm just giving you some samples. So this is a vocabulary that I created uh, for the students to find out like at least 20 vocabulary. And if you move on to the next, pardon. There is a puzzle maker. So this is a little different. So if you make the crossword puzzle, you don't have to give the exact answers, but I'm gonna go do the same thing. And here we go. This is just a sample, okay? So when you go through the presentation, you will have numerous ideas. So you have the clue. All you have to do is take a screenshot of the puzzle and share it with your students. So the advantage of this is if your kids are learners from English to French or French to English, you know your kids better than anybody. So give the clues based on how your learners are. And the other important thing is there may be visual learners in your classroom. They might learn better by using a picture of Blackberry. You could, I hope you could see the screen. Instead of giving Blackberry, you can give a picture. You can give a picture of the grapefruit. And if it is an elementary school teacher, I would prefer them to use visuals of grape, pear, raspberry, ask the students to color it, find out what it is in French, and then solve the crossword puzzle. So this helps you also work on your kinesthetic strength, like, you know, the visual, the hand and eye coordination. It helps a lot for them to improve their, their memory. So I move on to the next. Read, write, think, puzzle maker. So the best part of uh, these puzzles are it comes for free. You don't have to pay for any subscription. The link is given here. All you have to do is click the link and then try doing the crossword puzzle. And uh, in order to save time, I'm not going to do uh, the crossword puzzle, but this is how it looks like. So if you have the crossword puzzle, you just enter a word. The methodology may be a little different. So press add word and you have the words. 
And for the clues of the words, you can give series from words and then the clue is over here. You can also do vice versa. The best part of the crossword puzzle is it can be applicable for kindergarten students right through engineering students. So in case you want students to explore a reading passage, you don't have time to complete the curriculum. This is the biggest challenge that we are going to face because of time management. We take more time to teach virtually when compared to the traditional classroom. So how are we going to do this? And the best idea is give the websites for the students and ask them to create the puzzle. So your job will be to teach them how to do the technology. Separate them into different groups. For example, five per group and then give 10 different websites. So what they do is research the website, create the puzzle and the answer. And then you can walk this around. If you think your students can cheat in case because it's digital again. So you create one puzzle and then you share it with the students and they might fill in, okay, I got the answer. I got the answer here and just hand it over to you. In this case, the collaborative learning will always help. You have 20 students in the classroom, give them 20 different websites and ask them to research it and create the crossword puzzle. Give it to another student who can solve the puzzle. So at the same time, they learn two websites and finally do a collaborative quiz by giving the websites and the crossword puzzle to everyone. In your final quiz, you can add mix and match and create a puzzle. So sounds easy with time management and that could happen with read, write thing. As I said, it can be applicable from kindergarten students to engineering, any literature students, because reading is the best part of learning. You can't just spoon feed kids. They have to explore, they have to learn a lot. And this is the best tool to make them self-explore. Okay, and these two links, if you see the crossword lab, free online crossword puzzle, Again, it comes for free. Um, I'm not gonna try these two. I'm leaving it to you to explore. Math no. So it's not fun if I just keep talking with you, right? So let me give something for you to think. Vous souhaitez utiliser des puzzles et les jeux de recherche des mots pour enseigner et évaluer vos élèves. Selon vous, Quel pourrait être le plus grand défi auquel vous pourriez être confronté pour l'intégrer à votre programme? Um, en anglais, let's say you want to use a puzzle and word search to teach and also assist your students. What do you think could be the biggest challenge that you might be facing to integrate it to your curriculum? Because as I said, you know your students, you know the resource available. So come up with a challenge or come up with a curriculum that you want to integrate in the classroom, especially the virtual classroom. Uh, I'm going to give you like few minutes to reflect on it and then you can use chat. Uh, we, we might also ask some participants to share your ideas if you have faced any challenges in your classroom. So I'm going to mute for a few minutes and wait for you to think. Uh, the chat will be open. So uh, Keba, can I ask you to share the screen with the chat? Oui, so that we we could uh, see them chatting. So I'm gonna mute for a while. So sky is the limit for your creativity. Please go on. Dear teachers, the links have been posted in the chat box. So you can just uh, refer to those links, explore it, and you can just give a quick reflect on it, a quick reflection on that. Thank you. You can check what works for you. And even if you're not able to try, just think, okay, I'm gonna give this lesson plan. And what do you think will be a problem in that situation? Do they have the resource? And what kind of technology are they using? Will I be able to reach them? Do they know the technology? So all these should be there 
you have to be a little proactive to think about that. Uh, Keba, just let me know when the time is done so that Wait. I, I think we have a few more minutes. That's fine. Um, there's a one question is from Ms. Amal to train the students how to use it to insert the answers. Like how That's okay. So uh, can I move my screen? Um, I think you got the question. So I'm going to give you an illustration. Pardon. To go back. So if you see here, I'm just using my uh, desktop. So I'm using Google Slides. So if I use Google Slides, there's an icon over here called as line. So just click this and I'm going to draw a line like this. This is just a sample. And here you go, you have line color. So for example, in your vocabulary, you can give, choose red color for all masculine gender. Choose red, green color for all feminine gender. Again, so this way they distinguish between two gender and then let them choose the color. Or you say, I want to go with beige, maroon. And click the color that you want. So this could be done in laptops. If you have MacBook, you can use a tool called as Notability. So kids can um, just use your hands to scroll and uh, solve the crossword puzzle. If you are using a regular one and you are going to share a screenshot, use paint. There is another way. Paint is very simple. And the other challenge I'm going to expect from you, what if the student does not have any of this technology? I know, um, I'm sorry to tell, we also need to consider the socioeconomic background of the students they might not be able to afford to have a computer, not all of them. So they might be learning through their mobile phones. So maybe I'm asking you the question. The question is posed to you. How will you reach them? You can also share this. This can be the reflection. Let me know how you're going to reach these students. So if anybody has an answer, I really welcome you to unmute and share it with me. Um, through, uh, hi, ma'am. My name is Mandeep. Through hi, screenshot. Ma yeah, ma'am. Through screenshot, WhatsApp mm -hmm. messages, we mm -hmm. can reach students. We can give them this budget. Exactly. Good job. Thank you. Bravo. Merci. Elizot. Merci, Elizot. Come on. Uh, I agree with Ms. Uh, Mandeep uh, because uh -huh. in, <clears throat> in today's class only, I had a student who was uh -huh. not able to uh, join me virtually, but she joined uh, the class through Hotspot. And okay. I told her that she can uh, write down the uh, answers and uh -huh. then she can click a picture of it and she can email me also and she can WhatsApp me. Exactly. So, yeah. So that there sounds is an really good, Sanjita. Yeah. See so how you creative can... you guys are becoming. That's yeah. good. Yes. So this is how I tried to solve her problem and I told, it also guided her. She can convert the image into PDF mm -hmm. and she can email it to me in case she doesn't want her answers to get changed. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So all are, all are becoming tech wizards. Good job. Anybody else? <laughs> Thank you. I expect more. Can I? Okay. So let's... Um, before even starting this uh, presentation, I did my research. Uh, so what I was trying to do was 
get some information from uh, countries like India because we are not in the same boat. And I found out that there are few schools who are just getting the learning materials and handpicking kids who could not use technology. So they are sharing the materials, which is a printout to the students. So I would request you to first know about the students. So that is very, very important. You have to do a kind of, you know, a reflection with them. So just send them a document to home. It can be a Google form. Ask them about how they are feeling. Ask them about their hobby. Don't go directly to the socioeconomic background. It doesn't really good, uh, sounds good. So ask them what kind of technology they use. Do they have a printer? Do they have, um, for example, access to internet like 5G? Because all these are very important. We can't just take for granted that students have everything because we have it. So get some information from them and that will help you to be proactive to prepare your lesson plan, okay? And the other way is reach out to the school. Your school is the best way to help. Just let them know, I'm going to prepare a Quizlet book for the kids. You know, I'm using this tool and it's going to really help them. Can I, can I uh, use a Quizlet book? Can I take some printout materials and use somebody to deliver this to the kids' home? That's another way to reach them. Though we are in the digital world, it's very important that uh, screen time is reduced because this is going to really affect our students' health in the near future. Madam. Oui? Ah, oui. Le webinar. Ah. D'accord. On va passer. Uh, I think because we are short of time, we are, we are just moving on to the... Can you... Um, can they see the screen? My screen? Oui, madame. Oui. Okay. So I'm moving on to the next one, which is Quizlet. So if you go to Quizlet homepage, just click here and it takes you to the Quizlet. So this is another uh, tool which is available for you. For example, I'm going to put lowercase alphabets. I'm doing my search. <coughs> or I don't think I have to stay with the just French vocabulary. So, a zoo animal, for example, zoo animals and pets, traditional Chinese. You can teach them Chinese from home. And uh, once you log into Quizlet, it comes for free. You can sign in through your Google account. So Quizlet is an American online study application. It was actually uh, created by this person called Sutherland. And he was doing this because he wanted to learn French. So he created the digital flashcards, which helped him to frame the Quizlet with nearly 500 million lesson plans. So I'm going to give you one example. I uh, hope you have heard about digital flashcards. We usually, earlier we used to do it in hand. We used to draw, we used to put stickers and everything. So now you don't have to do that. Just go with the vocabulary. If you turn the card, you have the vocabulary translation and also the picture. So this is another way to reach kids because they like to learn with visuals and you don't have to create anything. All you have to do is just go search and you get numerous um, exercise which has been pre-done by people. If you want them to learn by themselves, as I said, um, you cannot be there all the time with them. They explore the vocabulary and they are going to assess themselves. For example, I just click Lapesh, it's correct. 
And I do not know raspberry, I'm just going to click La Fraise. So La Fraise, and then it gives the correct answer. So the students can learn. The best part is it has an audio. So if you click the icon over here, they can also listen. So there can be visual learners, there can be acoustic learners who learn through the uh, listening skill. So you start with spelling, you make them to read, you make them to write, and also to listen. So all the four skills in a language is uh, incorporated in Quizlet. So that is the best part of Quizlet. And going back, Uh, you have you can make them write you can make them spell and just another interesting game is called as match so pretty much kids are into online games and you have to find the best way to reach them so if you have for example peach just move it and the best part is there is a timer going on so all you can do is ask them you put a screenshot of what you have learned and I want the time to be limited to 30 seconds. So kids are going to finish the exercise with a screenshot with your time and you know who it is because they are going to log in with an account just like the icon S is there which tells it's my name, their name will also be displayed. So you know who is doing the work. That's it. So I'm gonna stop here because you can try it for yourself later. So all these are here, the links are given. For, for example, I give them drag corresponding items, but make your explanation very clear. Drag corresponding items onto each other to make them disappear. Practice until you complete the game within 30 seconds. So for learners, you, know, you think some people take more time, you can personalize again, give them one minute and then ask them to reach to you. So it's okay, be very, very flexible because students, you know, they're also going through a lot of stuff. So you know them better and give them enough time to complete the activity. So the best part is they have short-term memories. So they use your visual and the acoustic code to remember a few things. And another interesting thing about this quizlet is you can go live. You can go live and you can create it as a team mode. You can create it as an individual mode. So for example, I'm going to do a demo with the individual mode. I'm asking uh, Mr. Keba and Mr. Jaker to help me with this. So they are going to do the demo game. Uh, you have a code. So I'm, um, for example, I'm going to select this. So you have to log into join at www.quizlet.live and there is going to be a code, okay? But the game that they are going to share, you just log in and keep ready. They will give the code and let's play a game. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yes, Ms. Priya. Okay. Okay, there's just give me one moment. Yeah, sure. Okay. I stopped sharing my screen and now I pass it on to Mr. Keba and Mr. Jager. Oh, wait. Um, yes, teachers, I hope you could just see my screen. So I just logged into Quizlet and then uh, I just went on search. I just typed live free. And as Madame explained, you have flashcards, learn, you have different options. I could just see quite few teachers are uh, already using it for your online lessons. Way down you have match, gravity and live. And right now we're just going for a very short uh, quiz just to keep you uh, to know like how this works out for the students. So you have the team mode and the individual mode. So I'm just um, selecting on the individual mode. So you can just see that whether you want the French from the French vocabulary to, sorry, from English vocabulary to French or from French to English. 
So right now I'm just choosing English to French. And I expect now like uh, every participants who are right now into this Zoom meet, you could just click on or just type to www.quizlet.ly. I'm just going to share this link in the chat box. So I do appreciate quite a few are joining already. So you can just click on Quizlet Live. The link has been shared right now. So getting onto the link, it lasts for the code, the game code. So please type the code. Good, Monsieur Manish, Mandir, Monsieur Rahul. You can also use nicknames, okay? You can also use nicknames if you want. You don't have to use your real name if you want to. Yeah, the code is three two eight three four zero. So we'll wait for quite a few players, and then we could just uh, start this quiz game. Thank you. So I'm just starting the game. So you can just see here, just below the code, you have create game. So unless and until uh, the teacher clicks on this create game, the game will not be activated on the student's window. So even if students are missed out, you can just see still towards the side of the screen, you have the code has been displayed and way below you have the QR code. So if students are using mobile phones or tab, they could always just uh, scan the QR code. It allows them to join once again. So you can just see the names are being listed here. By, by default, it picks out, uh, I mean, the animals or any uh, funny names for each person. But I'm just starting the game now. I hope everybody's ready. Those have logged into this. Disconnected, okay. And here it goes. <clears throat> okay, boom. Hibu is leading. We Ur. You can just see uh, the players, which really creates interest of the students. So you can just set a timer. Yeah. So once everyone is done, you can just click on uh, the exit game. So it is initiated by the teacher and now the results uh, will be displayed that who has won. And this, and you can also just see what are the vocabularies are were used in this live game. Yes, Ms. Priya, it's over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I hope you have... So how was the game? Okay, uh, it, it was fun seeing you all participate. Thanks a lot because you know, you don't see that much of active participation and you guys did a great job. Keep rocking. So now let's reflect on a situation. Uzavi, Desi, De, The Fair and Quizlet. Um, I hope you are able to see my screen. Priyu Regabde, Monsieur Keba, Monsieur Jaker, Upe Regabde Lekran. Oui ou non? Oui, oui, madame, oui. D'accord, merci. Yeah. Um, donc, vous avez décidé de faire un quizlet en direct. 
which is like Quizlet, aujourd'hui pour le cours en ligne. Pendant que vous jouez au Quizlet, vous avez trois options. Les élèves peuvent utiliser leur propre nom, par exemple Harry, modifier leur propre nom en Harry Potter, ou utiliser le surnom comme Mr. Bean. Quelle sera votre option et pourquoi la préférez-vous? Et en anglais, uh, while playing the Quizlet, you have three options. Students can use your own names, like Harry, modify their own names as Harry Potter, or use the nickname like Mr. Bean. What will be your option one? Why do you prefer it? So please reflect and tell me what would be your choice. Did you see me unmute your microphone? Yeah, you can unmute and, uh, and uh, express what you really prefer. And I have an answer maybe... for that. Yes. Bonjour. Yes, sir. I think um, it's... Uh... Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, I think the first one, they use their first names because uh, in my classrooms, when I play Kahoot, I make mm -hmm. it a point, uh, you know, to tell the students to use their first names. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, our students come up with extra creative names that we don't want. Exactly. And because it's in a classroom, because mm -hmm. it's in a classroom, I think they all know each other's names. So it's not uh, a question of privacy or anything like that. So I Good. would obviously choose the first one, their own name. Good job, Sarah. And anybody else with the nickname generator or uh, nicknames? Anybody else? Have you, if you have used a GIMP kit, Kahoot or Quizlet? Excuse okay. me? Yeah, Radhika, Radhika please. Sometimes uh, <laughs> the student wants to know play with the nicknames. So uh -huh. there are people, they don't want to disclose their own name. So sometimes some students feel that it is comfortable. Exactly. That's what I want to know. Um, so yeah. I think that's yeah. a very good reflection, both Sarah and Radhika. Hats off to you for thinking ahead. Uh, so the only thing I would ask you to follow is when you're doing an assessment, okay? Be very careful to use only the first name or the last name that you already know. The reason behind this is you might have kids who are really naughty in the classroom. They might stall the time. Instead of taking 10 minutes, then you have to wait for the whole class to join. And especially in a virtual classroom, you cannot be monitoring them whether they are having the electronic app in the hands or they are doing something. So it is important that when you do your assessment, use your real names or maybe the name that is modified like Harry Potter because you know them, you can identify them. And from the list, if you do not see anybody, just let them know. Yeah, I don't see X, Y, Z, please come ahead and join or you will not be given the grades. So in that case, you have to use the names because you can identify the student and just go ahead with the class without wasting your time because time management is also very, very important in a virtual classroom. So saying that, let me go to the Next slide, which is, um, I know there are tools similar to this. And Sarah said that she has used Kahoot. Uh, my favorite is also Kahoot because I can personalize my lesson plan. This one uh, is a screenshot of something that I did for a reader because I want them to know some verbs. So I use some, I can create my own visuals uh, for the verbs and stuff to make them play the game. And I can also track them. So, and the, my next slide could be storyboard. So there are many people who love stories. So why don't we integrate it into the classroom? Because, you know, uh, in India, especially right now, I think um, this character is very famous. Mrs. Janaki from RSNM Matriculation School or whatever it is, this guy, Abhishek, created this character after all the online teachers coming into play, which shows uh, the importance of teachers in the society. He rightly challenged and he rightly explained the challenges that is faced by uh, teachers and students. So there are some teacher who inspired him to be an animoji and he used the teacher because he might be inspired by one of his teachers. So here is a platform for you to make your kids go very, very creative. Rather than giving them essays, dialogues, why don't we think different? So I'm gonna show you uh, the screen. So this is called a storyboard that, again, it is free, uh, but there is 
some limitations you can use like three storyboards at a time students can also log in with your uh, google account and then uh, create a storyboard since it comes for free so you have characters you have scenes town entertainment home outdoor school athletics transportation so i'm just going to click work classical so look at the options and characters for example, you say, um, I want a dialogue in a restaurant. So can you create a dialogue? Why do you ask them to write a conversation between Sylvia and Marco or uh, uh, Priya and uh, Sophia? Ask them, you create your characters from whatever century they are, whatever platform they are, from whatever country they are, they are going to choose it. We have teens, kids, and classical era, everything. And you also have textables. So for example, I'm going to use this as my screen. And then I'm going to introduce a character, uh, say, Marie. I can use the hair color. For example, I can personalize the eye color, all these. And then I can edit the pose. For example, um, I want the eyes to be like this. So these are all fun for the kids. These are all fun activities for the kids. If you ask them to write a dialogue or create the storyboard, they will definitely choose the storyboard. So update the pose and textable. For example, you have, um, and then put the dialogue box and then they can create the text. So you want uh, even science people, science teachers can use it. There are worksheets that they can use infographics that can they can use. So this is your choice. Sky is the limit for your creativity and the creativity of the students. So go ahead, use this tool to actually assist the students. It will be more um, an assessment tool, which is very informal. And I really love this and students love this too. So getting back, From Storyboard, I'm moving to Screencastify. Uh, some of you might have used Screencast-O-Matic. I heard that um, you are familiar with Screencast-O-Matic. I prefer Screencastify because um, I have a subscription, so I use that. So what is Screencastify? It is a free Chrome extension in your browser. Again, free. This application makes it easy to record, edit, and share videos of your computer screen. Just like, uh, I mean, very close to Zoom, but still. Recordings can easily be shared via email, embedding code, YouTube, and Google Classroom. So let me go to Screencastify. This is just a sample of a lesson plan that I have done for the kids. I'm not sure if you're going to listen to the audio, but that's very important. You have to, uh, Keba, you have to let me know if the audio is. Sure, sure. Okay, can they hear the audio? Uh, no. To share the computer sound. Okay, I think there is a problem with my audio. Okay. Just give me two minutes. Just there will be an option called share computer sound will be there. Yeah, but I'm sharing it. Uh, I'm using actually two screens, so I'm just trying so that it is easier for me. So I think the other screen that I'm sharing, I cannot have my audio. So um, just give me a moment, please. Yeah, technology always has some issues, so. I will see if my, one the other screen that I have is going to work with audio. Mama, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, please Daddy go. told me to check on you. Okay. Are you okay? I'm fine, baby. Thank you. So all these also come with the virtual classroom. Sorry. Um, 
Madam Priya, maybe I can just share the screen. Okay, that's better. Can you share your screen so that the audio is heard? Yes, please. Yeah. Since I have uh, two screens, I think I might have a problem. Uh, maybe you can just stop sharing. Okay. Uh, just give me one moment. I'm stop sharing. Okay. Now you go. So you can play it. You can determine what is, the, what is the best for you and submit the document to the Is it audible? All the other things are by taking the Isn't it cool? The continuous echo. So I request everybody to mute it except for Keba so that you can listen, please. Uh, Kiba, you don't have to show everything, just uh, they have to know what is Screencastify, that's it. So you can just move ahead and uh, you can stop at slide number 10 or 11 for them to listen to the audio. Okay, you can pass it. Okay, so shall I share my screen, Keba, now? Okay, thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Anyone? We. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you. So, the reason I like Screencastify is there may be a situation when you are not able to do a class, but you want to stay on time with your curriculum, what will you do? You can have pre-recorded lessons because that is like an asynchronous learning. And you can also uh, personalize the teaching because you might not find every vocabulary in the Quizlet or crossword or whatever you want. And there is also something where you can get attached or get connected with your students. So you can also go with Screencastify with a visual. So your videos also can be recorded along with that. So that students feel that, okay, the teacher is there with me and I'm going to follow her step-by-step -step instruction to do the lesson. So that is the best part of Screencastify. You need not, uh, this one actually it is go, it, it's like for 16 minutes. So I chose a room where it has to be really quiet and because I don't want to edit it. The best part is you can edit you can just break it into three pieces and send them half of the lesson plan for one day, half for the second. So you can really share it. Um, there is there is someone who has not muted. Uh, I kindly request them to mute it. 
classes we could not meet with the students every day so it was very easy for me to connect with the students and the next one is again uh, ed puzzle but uh, the strength of ed puzzle is you can use it with the youtube videos i know all of us are using youtube videos but how are we going to assess our students are they going through the ed puzzle um, are they able to understand everything so you have to really assess them whether they are learning and that's when you can personalize your learning your teaching with ed puzzle so i'm going to give you an example of a lesson i created using ed puzzle so here we go this is a youtube video okay i just got it from youtube but i'm going to use it for the students to see whether they are learning it um okay but again i think i have some problem with the audio can you can you share the screen yeah i can do that yeah because i have uh, this these two monitors i i think it's a little difficult for me to with the audio sure so i'm going to stop sharing my screen it's actually in the second slide you can click and yeah you can play it and i can just walk through Okay, so for example, your kids are going to watch this video, and you want them to be attentive in the classroom. So, just imagine you are in the classroom. So you go through. You just ask somebody, okay, can you give me the answer to make sure that they understand? But in a digital platform, how can you do that? So you can add questions in between, and then answer them. For example, here. Um, you can go with what is the translation for butter and then you have three choice um okay bye you can click one and then go with continue merci and then the youtube continues un poisson so now they have to focus on different things when they are watching the youtube that's very important so here what is the gender for cereal so you can click femina and uh, submit the cereal poisson so now you have this question qu'est-ce que tu prends au petit déjeuner so they might have remembered some vocabulary they might not have remembered some vocabulary so they can go back they can rewatch if you click the option and 
try to remember some of the vocabulary and type it. So vocabulary, you can just do a demo. It need not be the answers. And then click Submit. So you have um, open-ended questions. You have multiple choice questions. You can go with yes or no answers. So this will help them to learn the YouTube and integrate it in your Google Classroom. So if you are using Google Classroom, this is the best tool because if you want to evaluate them, then there are like a step-by-step -step process. I'm not going to work on that because there are YouTubes to let you know how to get into that. Um, Keba, you can uh, stop sharing my your screen and I can, I think I can go ahead with mine. Shall I? Uh, we know. Merci beaucoup. So they can use it and uh, it can be integrated to the Google Classrooms. So there are step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow with Edpuzzle. How do I enable Edpuzzle in Google Classroom? So step one, step two, step three, step four. And even if this is confusing, just click this link. It will tell you how to integrate Google Classroom and Edpuzzle so that you have the assessment directly to your Google Classroom. So now, Reflection three. Avez-vous utilisé ou utiliserez-vous Edpuzzle comme utile d'enseignement, d'apprentissage ou d'évaluation? Si vous avez déjà utilisé, pourriez-vous partager les défis auxquels vous devez faire face en utilisant cet outil numérique? Have you used or will be using Edpuzzle? So will it, you be using it for a teaching assignment, learning assignment, or assessment tool? So if you have not used also, you can come out with a plan. It's okay. So just hang on for one sec. You should be seeing my screen now. So you can reflect again and anyone, anyone can answer. So if you are, if you use a lot of YouTubes, then this is the best tool for you. Anyone want to share your opinion, your ideas, clarification? Teachers, you can unmute your microphone. I can just share your view. Unmute your microphone, please. I think that's the something we have to remind. Uh, uh, bonjour. Uh, bonjour. I have used, we, I have used Edpuzzle mm -hmm. as a teaching tool and uh, to assess the criterion A for listening and uh, video watching. And uh, I uh, didn't face uh, any challenges because uh, I was able to assess it and uh, I can give the marks there. Mm -hmm. I can create it also and I can uh, upload the same on the Google Classroom as well. So I think uh, it's up, it's, uh, you can also uh, stop, you know, preventing uh, the subtitles also. Exactly. Use that. Uh, that option in case you think that the child can go, uh, you know, ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you do have, the person do give you the options of uh, preventing this, you know. So I found it interesting when it comes to assess the listening and audiovisual. Exactly. Yeah. So especially as language learners, we also have to focus on your listening and spoken skills. And yes. listening is very important if they have to speak. So I think uh, Edpuzzle is a very great tool. Yes. And not only that, you can also break it into parts. So you don't yes. have to share the entire video for the week. That might be too much for the kids. So just put the first half alone and give questions for that. So say for a minute or two, uh, because you have to uh, give a different lesson plan, not always with that puzzle. So some other tool for the next 10 minutes. So that will be very helpful. Thanks a lot, Sanjita. That was very great. And thanks a lot for sharing it with us. And one challenge I, I think Keba was facing, so I will also ask Keba to share. Uh, what was the challenge? Keba, please. Yes, ma'am. Like, uh, yeah, I was also uh, using Edpuzzle in my teachings. So Edpuzzle, the only uh, difficulties what I faced is that, like uh, I create a class, for example, if I'm creating a class called grade eight, then uh, with for the same class where using the school email ID, 
where my colleague Prav also uh, has also started using at Parson for the same grade eight. He might be a science teacher. So at Parson, the only thing they're still working on with at Parson. So where if I share my lesson, right, from at Parson for the same grade eight, maybe an, one of my colleagues who has already using at Parson before me. So if I just share it or share it in the Google Classroom wall, it reflects that this lesson shared by Mr. Mohammed, but not by me. So that's the difficulty I faced it. So now, uh, can I answer to this problem? Yes. yes. So for that, I think uh, instead of creating the classes on the Ed Puzzle, link it with your Google Classroom, the individual Google Classroom, and that will help you. That will directly go to the you know that particular class which you are teaching, rather than uh, you know. Attack giving uh, rather than you know I don't know I mean this is this helped me also I also came across the same problem where I created the class and it actually posted on uh, some other class so linked it with your Google Classroom delete those created class the classes which you have created on Edpuzzle using their email IDs so it's better to link it with Google Classroom. Yeah, thank you, Miss. In fact, like yes. So I was also using we were using one Google Classroom for the all the subjects. So uh, for this term, we have planned up for uh, individual Google Classroom for each subject wise. So as you said, like, yes, if yeah. each subject wise, they have uh, uh, a separate Google Classroom, integrating Ed Parcel to that particular Google Classroom is much easier and it reflect our name itself. Yes, thank you for that. Thanks a lot, uh, Sanjita and Keba. That was very interactive. So you. yes, you might face challenges, but that is again another question. Should I be using it only if I have Google Classroom? Not necessary. So you can still use Edpuzzle. You don't have to assess, but still it can be used as a learning tool, right? You don't have to use always for the assessment. You can use it as a teaching tool, like stop, ask the kids the question, make them to answer. So it's, it's all your choice. Whatever resource is available to you, you can use it. That's, that's the best thing. So let me pass on to uh, the next one, which is Flipgrid. Okay, so now we focused on reading, writing, listening, spoken. Uh, sorry, reading, writing, listening. So how are we going to evaluate the spoken skills? Flipgrid is the best tool for spoken skills. I'm not, um, I'm not going to share some videos because you know I have the personal videos of my students, which I don't want to share, but I can give you examples so you have the uh, Flipgrid homepage, how to teach remotely with uh, Flipgrid. Again, creating video assignments with Flipgrid. So just go to the uh, link because this presentation will be shared with you. So the YouTube will always give you how to integrate it, how to use it and um, just play around, play around the tool and you will finally figure it out how to use it in your classroom. I think I want to keep up with the time. So finally, all these activities. So you do something that should be an outcome, right? So these activities apply brain research, multiple intelligence, alternative assessment, technology, and other educational in innovations to the classroom. They can help students who have spelling difficulties first, who with learning disabilities. As I said, no child left behind in a classroom. So. If a child is a special need kid, you can always personalize your curriculum using these tools. And students who want to have fun, not just the traditional classroom, chalk and talk method is all gone, who enjoy using multi-sensory strategies when learning. They have profound results, faster vocabulary recall, greater attention to details, better concentration, and quicker problem solving skills. So finally, I end up with my slide and this saying, Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Yes, just five people together, we thought we would do this. Madhmasul Sudha was actually the person behind this. And then we all joined the team. And today, we are reaching out to nearly, I do not know the number, uh, so maybe like 200 kebab? Yeah, approximately, yes. Approximately. And then it's going live, so somebody, somebody else will be watching it. So you are there. Now you are the people who have to transfer this knowledge to somebody. And especially during a crisis situation like this, you can join hands and help each other 
to deliver proper technology, proper curriculum to the students. And this day, this moment would not have happened if not for all these people who were behind what I am today. Uh, I, I would also like you to use this Gulf French Teachers Forum to share anything. You can reach out to them. They will have all the details. They have the PowerPoint presentation. So anything you need, you can contact them. And there is a Facebook book page for MKU French Department. As a, I'm also part of that. So you can see me and you can uh, reach me through MKU French or you can also reach me through the Facebook, my Facebook page. Just message me and you need any clarification, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are there for you. Thanks a lot and merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, madame. C'est une très, très belle présentation. Merci. J'espère que vous avez beaucoup aimé cette présentation de madame Charmant Priya. C'est une excellente présentation. Avant plus de nouveaux de cette année. Aujourd'hui, puisque ils vont nous aider à animer le cours. Ici en Cuba. Ici en Cuba. Moi, je peux mettre le microphone. Si tu keep keep ton microphone on, merci. Oui, nous avons pris de nouveaux dessins numériques aujourd'hui. Ces outils vont nous aider à animer le cours en ligne. Si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez les poser maintenant. Ne vous hésitez pas pour poser des questions en anglais ou en français. Um, you can also post it in chat and I can, I can also go through that. So there were some questions which was also shared so I can go through and see if I can answer some of them. If I can stop the screen share so that everybody can see. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, wait. Let me see. We Let can. See. Yeah, now we we can um, see everybody in chat. Uh, and they we, can search on their camera now. Want to see? Yes, I want to see some good faces for the morning. Yes, it's. I think it is nine thirty here in Boston. And you people are in the evening, so good to see you <laughs> all in different time zones. But still, we get connected thanks to technology. Yeah, almost UAE has five thirty now, five thirty p.m. Oh my gosh! I should I should thank these wonderful people, Monsieur Jaker, Madam, uh, Monsieur Shafi, Monsieur Keba. We were working in different time zones, almost. Right. Yes, night and day. I think we were early birds. We were night owls for most of the time, uh, making this happen. So. Thanks a lot for everybody to, for putting this together. Okay, j'ai beaucoup appris et je vous apprécie. Okay, uh, any questions? Just and as that. I said, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out even after the presentation, okay? Yep. Oui, on peut utiliser ces te technologies pour enseigner les maths, as I said, as them uh, you have the crossword puzzle. Remember, you have it puzzle. There are so many, so many uh, YouTubes which are available. I do not know if you know about Khan Academy. It has a lot of math YouTubes. So you can definitely use Ed puzzle in your classroom. You can use crossword puzzle in your classroom. You can use Screencastify in your classroom. Wait, be assured. 
Any other questions? So I just saw one with the math. And again, as I said, there is no age um, bar or something. You can reach the kindergarten students using the tool. You can reach an engineering student with the tool. So um, who hesitate to participate actively? That's a very, very good question. So <laughs> that's one reason you have uh, things like Edpuzzle and Zoom. Why don't you Zoom using Edpuzzle? Get them together and tell them, be prepared. You have this Ed puzzle, and this question can be posed to any one of you. And give them motivation. That is very, very, very important. So I, I, I just want to share something that I did uh, during these six months. I handled uh, different age groups. I handled school. I handled college at the same time when this pandemic was going on. So I made sure that I'm not going to use any negative feedback to my students. If they don't submit, I just said, please, can you submit this? Rather than telling, you did not submit it. And then I also named my students. For example, there will be students who will be, uh, I, I, I just posted in the Google Classroom. In 30 minutes, I will have my assignments back. So I named them Tejewe, Trao, Grand Vites. And they were so happy for it because they just came back so quickly. There are so many students who are even scared to come in. Uh, for example, Flipgrid, if you take, it's a video. They might be really, really scared to talk. Tell them, I'm not going to share this video to somebody else. It's for me and for you alone. So make them feel very, very comfortable. That is very, very essential in a classroom, okay? So you are half the parent. A teacher is half the parent and you know your kids. So just know what they like and give them. It's very important. They need you. They don't have any social interaction during this time. So the teacher plays a vital role and also give them a lot of group activities. For example, Zoom and put them in small break room. Since you can be proactive, you also think there could be a person who talks a lot. There should be a person who talks very little. Create a group like that and see how the outcome is. Then create another group with passive learners or very, very uh, people who are very shy to talk. So see who is coming out from there. So among the five, there should be definitely a person who takes one or two steps. That is what you need. So try hard, don't give up. As I said, just start your trial. You will make errors, but you will never stop to explore. Yes, Google Meet, Cisco WebEx, exactly. WebEx is also very good. I used uh, WebEx, I used Blackboard Collaborate. Both of them are very good too. So go ahead with those tools and use your breakout rooms. It's very important. You can also go along. You can step into their breakout rooms and see whether they are working. So that is one way to make them very, very active in your classroom. So any other questions? Ma'am, in Edpuzzle, uh, we need to generate quiz uh, or quiz are, uh, the option is available in the Edpuzzle only to generate quiz or I need to use any other app. No, the, the, you can use uh, the Edpuzzle app itself. Okay. You don't, yeah. Actually, the other important thing for Edpuzzle is just like Quizlet, you have millions, millions of lesson plan already embedded there. So you chose, you chose something that is uh, going with your lesson plan. Okay, you don't have to really create because you are multitasking. You are doing so many things, work-life balance. So if you cannot find something um, that you cannot create, go with something that has been created by others. Please make use of it. Don't hesitate. Okay. That helps you a lot. Yes. Yeah, I, to, to add on to this, mm -hmm. it has its own library where you can just uh, take the videos where it allows you to edit those videos as well. So you can do the editing. And if, you, if, if it has almost 10 questions, you could reduce it to five according to your need. So that... Uh, it was, that facilitates you. Yes. Yeah, so you can go as a public, you can edit. And as I said, if it is going to be for five or 10 minutes, it's too much for the kids. Please understand that that's too much. Okay, so break it into small pieces, uh, like uh, two minutes per day, or say, I'm going to give it, but uh, in my Google uh, screencast, if I would have seen, I'm giving it to you, you can finish it in one day or take like segments for a week and finish it. So that will also help. 
Yeah, there are some earlier questions like, uh -huh. uh, how will the teacher get back the finished puzzle? Yeah, so for the finished puzzle, if you are using Google Slides, make a copy. Okay, go to your Google Classroom, make a copy of the crossword puzzle. So they can go and they can play around. So they can edit their own puzzle so, and submit it into the Google Classroom. If they are going to use um, paint, then just take paint, take a screenshot and ask them to send it to you. That will help. Again, if they are going to use a MacBook, then Notability is a very important tool that they can use because they don't need um, anything. Just like they use hands to write and draw, they can use the different colors and uh, do it and post it in the Google Classroom. So create a space for them and they get back to you. And imagine you don't have Google Classroom. Ask them to just attach it to your email or just WhatsApp. Like uh, I think uh, Sanjita or somebody said, WhatsApp is there. There's also another question on the time frame. Is <laughs> it possible to give a medium sized puzzle within half an hour? Exactly. Uh, uh, how do you think, how do you think that, um, for example, just five, just five answers you can create and it could be a paragraph. Ask them to read a paragraph and then the answer is in the puzzle. So you definitely can do it. It takes very, very um, little time, like a couple of minutes to create a puzzle. And once you, as I said, once you start to explore, the first time when you create a puzzle, it might take 10 minutes. The next time you create a puzzle, it might take 15 minutes. Another important thing that I want to, to which I forgot to tell is, when you are doing the puzzle, you can also ask the students to put it in a Word document and send it to you when they are creating the puzzle. So it will be easier for you. Just cut, copy, paste, and the puzzle is ready. So when they are going through the, um, if, if you think it's too much on them, give them a passage and tell them, okay, I don't understand these vocabulary, so I need help. So ask them to underline, type it, and send it to you as a Word document. Now, your job is to go through that page Choose the vocabulary that you think, add something if you want to, or delete something, and make a puzzle and deliver it to them. So that also helps. Go with Word document if they are finding it very difficult with the Google Slides. Anything else? Um, okay, I'm just moving my... Okay, please for... Um... Okay, I'm just Zoom is better up and I share everything. Yes, that's good. Mess. Who has stayed to participate? I think I answered that. For uh, Ossainile Math, I think I answered that. Yes, and then I'm just going back to see if I could answer any questions. Okay, ma'am. This any other question they have, they can email to us. Yes, okay. exactly. So right. don't hesitate. You have both the contacts, and this presentation is shared with you. So it's all yours. We say it. Thank you, teachers. Fin almost shown with Monsieur Mohammed Safi Sharif, the Gulf French Teachers Forum. A fair and this could be a massimo. Okay, bonsoir à tous. Je crois que tout le monde a bien profité de cette session. Et pour cela, tout d'abord, je dois remercier l'Université Madre Camarage, son vice chancellor, registrar et madame, euh, professeur Mademoiselle Souda, le chef du département de français, et tous les membres de son département euh, qui nous ont aidés et qui étaient prêts pour euh, organiser euh, ce webinaire euh, dans un délai, comment dire, tout de suite. Dans un court, euh, euh, comment dire, euh, dans un court temps. Ok, d'accord. Donc, euh, je dois remercier le département de Madrid Cambridge University. It takes immense pleasure for me to thank the Madrid Cambridge University, the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, and the Head of the Department, Professor uh, Suda, and uh, all her team members for helping us to organize this uh, uh, webinar in a short time, and which was very useful. Aussi, euh, je remercie Madame Shanmuga Piria, euh, professeure dans l'école publique aux euh, États-Unis, qui a bien préparé son euh, présentation sur des outils numériques, qui est un besoin pour tous les professeurs actuellement. 
I also thank uh, Shanmug, uh, Madam Shanmugh Piria, who is a professor, uh, professor in the government schools in the United States, who had prepared well all her uh, this webinar with all the useful practical uh, uh, technological tools which will help to all of us, which we are in current need of it. Et aussi, je remercie mes collègues, M. Keba et M. Jaker, qui étaient toujours là pour nous, pour moi, à aider, à préparer avec les nouvelles technologies et pour les coordinations avec tous les membres, qui étaient formidables. And I thank uh, very, very profoundly my colleagues, M. Jaker from Kuwait and M. Keba from UAE, who are always a helping hand, even though they have very busy schedule. And we always brainstorm, find out the time for communicating, setting up things. Okay, so very wonderful uh, coordination with them. Thank you, sir. And all our colleagues all over the world, all our teachers who are the participating here, who are taking the time to join us, supporting us, and helping our French Gulf Forum to grow every day. If we can say that. Également, je remercie tous les professeurs de français dans le pays golf et dans le, le monde entier qui ont répondu à toutes nos invitations, qui ont participé dans les, tous les webinaires. Et c'est un, vraiment un très, euh, très bon soutien pour nous. Ça nous donne des forces, ça nous encourage beaucoup. Et aussi, euh, nous aimerons bien que vous restez avec nous. Donc, euh, on, peut, on pourrait faire encore de meilleures choses pour améliorer l'enseignement et l'apprentissage du français dans le monde entier. Then, uh, je crois que c'était uh, une bonne soirée, on a, on a passé. Je crois qu'on va aimer emporter cette connaissance et partager avec tous nos autres membres aussi. Merci. And I hope the sessions, whatever we are conducting, is very useful and you are making benefit out of it and passing around all of all the members around. Thank you very much. Virtual thanks to all of you. Merci, monsieur.